It's like I've got marginal words. Welcome to the Ocean Hour in the We Are Learning here in Spokane. One continue kind of an anticlimactic end to chapter nine of replay when he didn't put any new sources in at all. Um, basically, read some of the conclusions of claims that were in the paper that he did with Jason Lyle back in 2016 episode with that down the line. And uh, uh, it's kind of a mess. Uh, getting up the chapter is kind of intriguing. It has a really long about a page worth of descriptions about, about how originally with no plum the Babel Tower of Babel incident and um there's no sources for it whatsoever it's a complete nothing mess uh, and which has a bunch of reference notes for the mass of little data points in them and I'm not at all sure how he's going about using these but they're apparently for to construct these charts that are showing the contexts, and what I'm going to be looking at is whether or not any of the scenarios make any sense whatsoever in terms of what we actually know about any of the people, whether or not he ends up citing any other sources other than just the material that he um, our connections when you're kind of skiffy little level, so we may not be able to do very well here. Part two relates to an article that came out on the in the journalism. Sweet little thing, and you can see some of my little marginal notes that I would throw in there. Um, where uh, apparently there's a book on baby dinosaurs on the ark, critical of creationism, that came out with a bunch of people who are more in the um, older creationist and uh, the evolutionist, uh, uh, Gibbert and John, that by a logo. And boy, the um, uh, AI the Journal of Creation doesn't like that one intriguing about it was uh, some of the side that um, Tate was putting out. And fortunately, an awful lot of the technical papers that are involved are actually available. Uh, and he makes, uh, uh, he picked on a, a 2015 from Taylor, which was about um, evolutionary resurrection of flagellar motility, uh, which was looking at dynamics of how mutations, which are systems, and how uh, uh, It represent the original paper. Uh, so if anybody wants to look at the hand version of it versus what the actual content of the paper is. But where he really jumped into my area was up uh, some fossil early mammals. And um, uh, mammal origins, uh, it, this one is an amazing shame. He, the authority quotes just a tiny snippet from a piece by. Um, to Feli and Brian David, unfortunately, uh, it wasn't available open access, but I was able to get a comment on it. I'll put that right up to the screen. Here we go. And you can see the parts that I put in little boxes are the segments that you'll see were quoted uh, in Tay's article. And effectively, he just leaves out the point, mainly the point the article was about, because it was a commentary piece. On another, also not available access, uh, from 2000 by Luo, uh, at all. That was on uh, the Synodelphus uh, Tsalei, and um, some uncertainty about whether or not it was an early marsupial or not. By leaving out all of the side issues about what the paper was about, he kind of slips this under. The problem was um, this fossil act was a basal eutherian, and uh, that uh, came uh, understood by uh, the 2018 paper in Nature, which is still before the article that the creationist is writing. And, uh, put a link of that up on that. Is uh, a new mammal from the lower Cretaceous, behold, biota, and the implication 
Uh, it's really nifty because what it involves, and also there's, uh, I'll put in a link to a 2011 paper that Luo did, uh, another one by Williamson in 2014, which uh, fills in an awful lot of things. Why, why is Tay troll all the way to 2003? Why? Because he can authority quote comment that was talking about how little was known. In fact, the Cephal paper, after the segment that uh, the Asianists are citing, uh, said that um, uh, the unusual, uh, that uh, uh, it's still to date, the geologic record has yielded few fossils directly on the origin of marsupials. That is the part that they didn't quote. But the low paper was about usually representing the oldest known metaphysics providing a source of new information about time and place of origin of metatherian mammals and the nature of their adaptation. So when you plug the 2003 work that Hay did not discuss with the uh, 2011 work and follow-up work that Tay also did not discuss, uh, it's clear that this is not a problem. This is not nearly as much of a concern as uh, Tay was making out. The only way he could it out to be such is by cherry picking something from nine years earlier. Very, very, very inappropriate stuff. Yeah. Oh, up to about three stars, uh, stars on there. So that's working out. Uh, but it, oh, hi, Ian. Yes. Uh, I see you in the chat over there, but I'm seeing you in a little part on there. Hello. Yes. Uh, it's only just, uh, it's not popping up in one side, maybe you popped up in the other. Uh, in a busy time, it was raining forks and hoe handles earlier in the day, and now we're getting back up, um, we're cycling up through the rain and cold, a uh, warm cycle. We should be up in the 80s and 90s, the middle of the week. We'll find out what's going on on that little front. Um, I've been having a fun time filling in uh, more of the battle on the rocks were there and getting also everything. Hi there. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. I, it's, um, it shouldn't really be breaking up, but I'll, we'll have to fend for ourselves on it. Um, the um, I got most of my material pre-sorted for the cosmology chapter, which is the second big one that I'm working on, and um, uh, ferreting out. Um, I had about 30 or 4 years worth of creationist literature littering my basement in giant stacks that um, last year, for about a six-month period, I was methodically sorting through to get them coordinated and then uh, focused even more tightly on uh, structuring things to relate to the upcoming books so that we'd be able to get as much of that as possible. And uh, I think it's going to be well worth the effort because Rock's Volume 2 is just a delicious, fun thing to write. There's so many wonderful subjects that are covered in there. Um, and it'll just be an interesting thing to, to ferret out. A lot of the geology material that I've got uh, structured, um, we'll see how, what there is that Jackson works, because he's going to be running through an awful lot of the chronology of things, including the Precambrian and the Cambrian explosion. There's going to be quite a bit of origin of tetrapods. Uh, so there we're talking about Paleozoic. And I'll be funneling a lot of this background material that I have assembled on the on the geology of it, um, uh, ESs and that, as, as we follow that period. Um, it's going to be, I think, a, a juicy, fun companion. And give you, if, if, for those who have the first volume, you'll realize just how, how much information there is to cover. The second volume is going to be volume. So there we go on there. So, um, <laughs> um, the um, I I pretty well decided because I do have a copy of the bloody thing that I'm going to be going ahead and finish with the Jensen 2017 book. I'll just continue on and discuss his 2021 traced book. Um, it's got um, a little bit of a bibliography apparently, uh, which goes like a whopping ten pages maybe. Uh, but I'll want to see how he's making use of this and how it cross-checks against the original book. And um, given the momentous nature of the subject matter, I would have expected there to be a heck of a lot more references on this point, but we'll find out as we go through it. It'll, it, it'll be, I think, a fun adventure to go on. And anybody that has um, been keeping track 
back of Dan String Cardinale and uh, Joel Duff and that who have had some criticisms of uh, Jensen. I'll be looking at it from my perspective, from looking at how he's making use of his sources and whether or not he's conclusion jumping based on them and how much of it's just being recycled from the previous book. So we'll find out how all of it goes. Um, I've got a pretty good selection of material uh, for the next uh, couple months, so we should be able to um, and uh, I'm, I'm just fingers crossed about whether I'm going to be able to make a heck of a sense about how Jensen compiles his charts in this book, because I already know from seeing his um, uh, paper where he was jousting with Dan and um, uh, well, Joel on um, the um, population growth issue and the Young Earth Creationist chronology, that there's an awful lot of those papers that he does in 2019 that I can't figure out how he's constructing the data sets, even though he supplies the data sets that you can download, and I already, I've, I've loaded them all in. So I'll be in to see whether, how transparent his arguments are. I'm dealing with an awful lot of, of vertebrates here and others in this chapter 10 that's coming up. And um, it's going to be to see how he can, a couple of the charts looks like he's having species at a fairly steady clip in recent times, you know, in, in the period that's only over the last two or 3,000 years. And uh, that's, uh, I'd love to see whether or not he's going to be slamming into that. And so that means that some of this material may be highly relevant for the appendix that we're going to do for Rocks Volume uh, which is a breakdown of the Ark Encounters kind list. Uh, now that we have access to the whole list, um, we're going to be looking to what kinds there are on it, how closely it's map onto the family level, what, why is it in the order that it is, which is, by the way, not alphabetical. So clearly they're arbitrarily picking up on an order of things, which look they're just kind of riffing off of standard systematics. But other branches of creation are not pension to anything. Uh, oh, what is the ETA for volume two? Oh, my best guess. Let's, um, oh, I can't put, oh, wait a minute. That's why that's not picking up because that's in the, whoops, stop sharing on that. There we go. Uh, I'm anticipating, oh, let's see if I can get the thing on here. Um, probably next year. Um, I'm, I'm sure we can get it out of the way by spring of uh, 2023. I would be gobsmacked if we can ram it all together uh, for the end of the year, but we'll we'll find out. I'm also just finishing up on a second Paralogs novel. Uh, I've got three chapters left to go on that. That one's been a very long um, set as well. Um, I am keeping track of all of the primary source material and generating the index as we go. And of course, once I get the chapters from Jackson, he's having to get past his um, college material. And then once we slide more into the summer and all of that, uh, he'll have more time to be able to dive into the material on. Um, so anyway, uh, hoping for a yes, yes. Well, we'll, cr we'll cross fingers on whether or not there can be a Christmas present. Uh, but um, it's it will be done when it's done. And uh, we'll want to make it as up to date as possible. Um, we'll want to have quite a few school. Human evolution section is going to be a fun one to construct as well. Jackson will be doing the main core area of that. I know we're going to probably field all the material over there. Uh, that's it given to vet to make sure that we're all on uh, the right field there. Uh, I had probably the biggest blob of background material next to full uh, young earth creationist stuff relating to the human evolution material. And uh, when, when I finished off the cosmology chapter, then I'll have a massive space down that I will be able to devote to pre-sorting all of that material to get all stuff on Homo erectus and Homo naledi and the issues, the issues about the use of fire, the development of tools. Uh, and as well as the various creationist criticisms and various ups and downs and ins and out on there. Um, it'll be a really fun one to deal with because there's so many of the, first of all, everyone needs, has changed and how little change. 
in our understanding of you. And uh, so basic that there's a group of Australopithecines that we now know is much more different than they thought 20 or 30 years ago, from which somewhere in that bunch, there is speciation event leading to uh, several groups of lineages that end up being, may in fact represent two or three different species. That's uh, the suspicion. But that you couldn't tell originally because initially you didn't have an enormous data. Uh, the other area that will be really is creationist misrepresentations of Neanderthals because there's been a, just a, an astonishing sea change in, first of all, the fact that we have DNA directly from Neanderthals, and also um, not only was there a good fossil record collected in, over the last years uh, for Neanderthal, but in recent times there's been even more material on juveniles and detailed analyses of growth patterns. So you can see how teeth are developing. You can see how bone sutures and stuff are connecting up. And all of that ends up reinforcing an obvious thing that although we could interbreed with uh, Neanderthals and did so on maybe a hundred occasions during our interactions, uh, that's what the genetics is suggesting, uh, they're not the same species as we are. And it is utterly inconceivable to think that you could stretch out the human barrowman enough to accommodate them. And yet that's exactly what creationists try to do. And then of course they have to start indulging in hilarious splits. We, You'll recall from um, the Rocks Were There Volume 1, we had a, an updated version of that chart that lists off how creationists can't make up their mind as to whether certain taxa are humans or apes. Uh, it hasn't gotten any easier for them. And there's so much new material on um, the paleogeography and issues of like the Tova eruption, uh, the Toba eruption as to whether or not that was affecting uh, things and the various spreads of uh, the Homo erectus population groups. And of course, the ones we know about now, Denisovans, and the mystery group that there's a genetic signal for, but we don't have any fossils to connect up. Uh, the Denisovans are really in the state that Homo habilis was uh, back in the day. And there too, um, we'll have fun going into the, the point about the creationists who want to obliterate it as a, a, a taxon um, because it's in that zone where is this uh, most advanced Australopithecine or the most primitive Homo genus. And it's precisely because they have so many transitional components that they're difficult to classify. So. Um, there's an awful lot to deal with on there. Oh, and uh, Boskmaster, good morning. Yes, the connections are, uh, now I'm running it uh, like a full uh, uh, signal strength. Yay. Um, all of this keeps me deliciously busy. So long as I can maintain the internet connections to be able to download uh, works, uh, I'm like a kid in a candy store because uh, this is a, a continuing refrain that I'll remind everybody of. Nobody should take for granted how fabulously available so much information is. Uh, freebie. That, uh, and this means that uh, there's no excuse for modern day scholars not to have a um, playoff of all the available material because too much of it's readily accessible for nothing, no cost. Um, in the old days when I would have, if I wanted to find um, a particular technical paper that restricted me a lot in, and we're talking like 1995. If I wanted to um, do a source analysis for Dwayne Gish's evolution, the fossils still say no. Bum, bum, bum. Um, I discovered that I really couldn't find most of the technical literature on that unless I wrote off to people and found things because even a lot of the local uh, college libraries didn't have paleontology departments and therefore uh, they didn't have access to an awful lot of these journals. None of that is a problem now. And if I wanted to find them, I would have to physically go and make photocopies <laughs> of the texts. Uh, books, some of those were available in some of the, of the libraries, but it was a, just a, a smattering hit and miss thing. Whereas now 
So much of the material is downloaded and you can download for free uh, from an assortment of archive areas and uh, academia, EDU and others. It, it, if it isn't available through one place, it's available through the other. And don't forget, if you still uh, have need of some things, contact the authors. And like as not, they'll send you a PDF of it themselves. Um, that's happened as well. So that means that, that what we want to create is a network of critics of stupid who can marshal their own areas of expertise. So uh, everybody, this is true for Ian, this is true for uh, Bossmaster, it's true for absolutely anybody else in this area that wants to dive into it. Uh, you want to home in on areas that you love to study anyway, and that you can study at a level to where you can tell the full data field as much as possible. If you have access to specialists, make use of them, contact them, let them know, bring them into the field. Um, I run various things that I write um, past Dan Stern Cardinale because he's a geneticist and Colton who uh, is a geology training, others to, to make sure that things have the um, full bore <coughs> of um, technical accuracy about it because we want everything to be bulletproof. But don't assume that you need to reinvent the wheel, that you need to research everything on your own. And the fact that the more that you can make use of other people who have already done work like that to act as a springboard that you can then go and focus on and find things that I won't know about or that other in other areas don't know about and do sh shows on it. Uh, um, if you have a website, uh, post posts, uh, whatever venue is comfortable for you. Uh, I like the creating of um, the uh, finished physical books that can perform the dual role of college level precision and rollicking good writing to where it's fun to read and there's an awful lot of funny bits in there where you'll go holy smokes i didn't know about all of that and certainly there's going to be way more of this we touched upon elements of rib tickling in the first uh, book because there were cases of where creationists were just got their head up their ass uh but in volume two since we're dealing with the search for noah's ark and we're dealing with all the complaints that creationists have that there's somehow flood legends all over the place and that there are living dinosaurs maybe or dinosaurs that were alive just recently like stegosaurs traipsing around Cambodia in the 1200s um, that now you're into a completely new level of stuff that that is both hilarious and pathetic because it involves such an amazing misunderstanding of sources and um will misunderstanding of material and strained reading of things. And so uh, you'll, you'll be able to, uh, we'll, we'll have cataloged a bit on that. And I'm just finishing up the section at the end of, of uh, the big slosh chapter, which relates to um, uh, the um, uh, Armitage and the, his um, Triceratops horn, which may or may not be from a Triceratops and uh, all of that and in relation to soft tissue. Um, the short form there is they deal with an extremely short um, or misrepresentation of scale that there are literally no examples of uh, any prehistoric beast that is thought to be millions of years old that is in anywhere near the state of preservation as Utsi the Iceman that's like five or six thousand years old. And um, the more recent the form is, the better preserved things are. And when you get down into the range of things that are eh, 100,000 years and less, you can now extract really large segments of DNA, which is why we have DNA from Neanderthals. And we have DNAs from Denisovans, even though we don't have a hell of a lot of uh, fossils from them. And the mystery group that um, uh, I suspect... Um, Given tooths and teeth and other issues, it, uh, I would be more surprised if in the next 50 years we haven't found a few more blips on the scope. Whether we ever find any detailed fossils of them is quite another matter, uh, and which then brings up a taphonomy issue of why are we able to find, in part because Neanderthals buried 
they're dead and did things and they, and we have a bit better field to run off of if you're a highly nomadic culture um and if uh, maybe they burn their dead uh or just let them disintegrate in the air um then we're not going to find a heck of a lot from them uh so all of that's uh, part of it um some of the stuff the part of the the big editorial decision i'll be having in um, volume two in the human evolution issue is how much of the stuff on the development of language and um, uh, the whole nature about why we have minds and self-awareness and all of that uh, a lot of the artistic sensibility i think a lot of that stuff will be reserving for the uh, book on the evolution of uh, religion and the nature of the way things are and why we come up with things that we uh, have. Or, uh, so it'll be an interesting little triage thing. Needless to say, I have enough material in my process and Jackson and I have enough books uh, to fiddle with and I have at least one book beyond even the uh, ones working on with Jackson um, that um, uh, will keep, keep me busy for an awful long time. And um, I'd like to do one of the only I have the working title Kulturkampf, uh, which is highly relevant today because of the issues about uh, to what extent are conservative creationist views wanting to be put into the schools. And thank heavens, Kent Hovind isn't on the Supreme Court because he might be actually interested in doing that. But we have a bunch of minds on the Supreme Court that are not much better in terms of paying attention to information. Uh, Justice Thomas, for example, uh, and Gorsuch, both, in their dissent when the court ruled in favor of um, uh, some of the vaccine mandates that uh, annoyed uh, some of the culture campers, um, they actually alluded to the complete fiction that some of the vaccines uh, were made from aborted fetuses. Nope, sorry. And yet some of the people who were opposed to the vaccines were doing it for that excuse. They actually thought that, but it's not true. And so it's looking like Gorsuch and um, uh, Thomas, at the very least, are objectively no less scientifically illiterate than Scalia was when he wrote the uh, dissent for Edwards v. Aguilar. And going to start throwing precedent out the window. Uh, stare decisis and all the rest, given how old the Edwards v. Aguilar decision is, uh, if, if they keep at it, who knows, they might actually try to throw that out as well as badly decided and get equal time creationism put back into the schools. Uh, who knows what will happen. The Trump pieces are going to be on the court for the next 30 or 40 years if you are them fairly young. So um, uh, fasten your seatbelts, kids. It's going to be a bumpy ride. And it reminds us why I don't ever want to see the Republicans ever gain control of the Senate ever again or the presidency so that they cannot govern who gets on the court ever again, at least not in their present constituency. It's a sad end for the Republican Party of Abraham Lincoln, but such is life. Yeah, indeed, uh, one step closer to a theocracy. And they want exactly... Um, uh, there was an interesting interview with... Um, um, on uh, on the media, I think, um, with uh, regarding Justice Thomas, and there's a biography of him called um, uh, "The Enigma of um, Clarence Thomas" that goes into the does a really good peg of his psychology. He's a, a black nationalist uh, from the Malcolm X kind of extremism, and uh, but then he got hyper conservative, and he basically doesn't think affirmative action or any kind of judicial uh, assistance um, should be done at all. And in fact, he thinks that uh, the, the black nationalistic identity is assisted by the pain and travail of discrimination so that uh, they become kind of a weird social Darwinist meets Malcolm X. It's an odd mentality. And then, of course, he has... Uh, his uh, wife, who is a uh, nutball central, uh, and uh, she accepts every idiotic conspiracy theory that's coming down the pike uh, with the uh, election coverage. And so I think the historians are going to have a field day, provided we survive as a republic, uh, dealing with the background of all of that. Oh, um, 
Oh, yes, there's uh, yeah, so I'm having information showing up in my main window, so I can't highlight anybody. But uh, I guess I'd, I would like, uh, Nidair, I'd, I'll read it over here in the Netherlands. The culture struggle far right hijacked the displeased farmers camp and are rallying them to shut down the country today. Yeah, there we've got um, the, the, one of the reasons why I'm so concerned about the current times is how much of it reminds me of the 1920s where an awful lot of extremist right-wing groups were percolating up. Um, Mussolini got into power, remember, in the early 1920s in Italy, a decade before Hitler came along in Germany. Hungary sounds like where we've been down this before. Orban won re-election in uh, Hungary, NATO. Um, we got the with Erdogan in Turkey, uh, also part of NATO. Um, it's a dicey time and movements knocking around all over the place. And um, if we can avoid like a world war or a great depression, um, they, they will have less leverage and stability to feed off of. So we're an interesting time, kids. And we don't want our version of the 1920s to turn into a new version of the 90s because we all know that didn't turn out very well for an awful lot of people. And I am I want my nice 21st century back where we have our space cruisers going up to the orbiting space station and our big moon bases and our um, probes out to the planets and all that and, and ultimately a Star Trek universe. Um, I want that too. So... Um, yeah, uh, an idea. Yeah, because we'll keep us keep us posted on any interesting developments there, <laughs> with regards to the Netherlands. Uh, Holland has, um, uh, as as most cultures do, uh, a complex history where you can have extreme right wing and prejudicial. The Dutch, who have many traditions of tolerance, were as like everybody that became a colonial power, sons of bitches. It's like you ship all of your barbarians out to run the colonies and oppress people. Uh, we did not fare well as colonial powers in the Philippines. Uh, you found the Belgians. Uh, Ikulu Poirot's little culture were snots uh, running the Belgian Congo. So I, I could argue that it is impossible for any culture to ever function as a, a, um, a decent colonial power. Um, Britain had their downsides in that as well. The Chinese are looking to be the new imperialists. They're uh, glomming on to all sorts of they have bases all around the Indian Ocean and all that, where they are trying to go after resources and maintain trade connections and put their little surveillance cameras and all that stuff in. And um, uh, they will produce an awful lot of anxiety and antagonism in the next half century or more as we kind of bump things out. So it, it's, it's an exciting and interesting time we go through. Um, there's uh, uh, side issues then on the uh, history and culture of everything. So, uh, ba -da -bump. Uh, we've got a good half hour. Uh, once the uh, thing, uh, I wasn't able to get the fresh title on it. It should be uh, Replacing Darwin 103. Uh, I'll correct that when I get uh, the finished um, sequence done. And I'll get all the links and all that in there. And uh, at the very least, we've had better luck at this hour of night than uh, I had anywhere else. And I'm sure that was largely the problem that um, I'm in kind of a hole even on cell phone service in the spot where I'm at, which is a little bit of a problem as well. And so I think that probably aggravated plus the fact that the, the sheer track on Reist was way too high for poor little me with my little slow internet to uh, slip into the corners. And the fact that it seems to be working well on here means, yep, this is working. So we will see some time. Uh, um, We'll stay careful on monkey pox and uh, uh, waves uh, during the 4th of July celebrations and um, wondering what the hell went on in Ukraine and whether the Chinese are going to become a nuisance, uh, the, uh, Taiwan, and who knows what else is going to go on. Um, but we'll keep plugging away at it. Little geeky scholars like me continue working on things and standing up for the truth and and uh, if somebody is an effing idiot, I see no reason why, why I shouldn't point that out. I have evidence for it. So uh, stay safe, all, and uh, we will catch you all in uh, next week. And we are ending Z.